Casio released this watch, the GBD H2000, just last week. I ordered it pretty much right away. I ordered the all black version from Amazon. It arrived Tuesday night. I opened it up Wednesday, it's Thursday now. I've only had it a couple days and I wanna give a review of it so far because some guys are asking in the comments of my shorts, YouTube shorts say, you know, they wanna know, they're on the fence whether they should buy it or not. So I wanna give my review thus far, five out of five stars for like, the physical body of this watch, three out of five for the functionality and I'll go over that, but I just wanted to tell you guys right off the top that I like this watch. First of all, it fits, okay? My wrist is eight and a half inches around. Not all G-Shock watches fit me, okay? And this one does, and if you are a big wrister, you should know that this has a big wristband. And like I said, eight and a half inches is my wrist, and there's a couple notches left, so could probably go up to eight and three quarter inches but it's it's great it's comfortable it fits well and i measured it at being about uh three quarters of an inch thick i put a three quarter inch uh i put a three quarter inch wrench on it and you can see three quarters of an inch so it's big but surprisingly it's light it's amazingly light this feels heavier than this. This is actually 11 16 of an inch thick. You know, it looks a lot bigger, but this one, like I put it on, it, it does not feel big at all. It's amazing. It feels very light. It is lighter than this one. And this is a ProTrek PRW 3500. And this one feels heavier. This one obviously is smaller, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like it. You know, on, on, if you look on paper, this, this seems, it seems so big. Like I said, three quarters of an inch thick, but when you put it on your wrist, it, it, the sleeve goes over it. No problem because of the, of the taper on the sides. That's why G-Shock makes these flying saucer shaped watches is like to be like a ramp for your sleeve to get over. You know, this one, the King is like a hockey puck. The sleeve hits it and it stops. The sleeve can't go over this watch. So as durable as this big old lunker is, it's it's a pain to wear. This one's big and durable. Uh, this one's big. It's actually bigger, like I said, same lug to lug. It, it it does not feel big when I'm wearing it. It's It's amazing what Casio did to design this watch that it's big, but it doesn't feel big at all. And it's very comfortable, in my opinion, to wear. Like I said, I'm a big wrister. If you're a small wrister, your experience may be different. You know, I can I can ask uh, my wife or my daughter or one of my younger sons to, to try it on and give his opinion as a smaller wrister how it fits. But if you are a big wrister, you can pull this off no problem. I guarantee it, all right? And... A lot, of, a lot of Casio watches put these these wings on here, and it's terrible. It's like, you know, Casio, they're Asians. They don't have arm hair, but these wings pinch arm hair. They take up room on the band of the watch, making it tighter for big wristers, and there's really no point. This one, the band, they do away with the wings, the, 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 that kind of shape they're looking for with the wings is achieved with the band itself and there's these ramps here like i said on my wrist it feels great and i like i don't see it being a problem for most people but you'd have to try it on but i can tell you that that i love the comfort and fit of this watch okay so like i said five out of five stars for the body and the best part of this watch, without a doubt, is the display. This is one of these MIP displays. And you can read it at very acute angles. It has great legibility. And if you are a G-Shock enjoyer, as am I, you've, you've had to put up with these terrible LCD displays. 
And the negative LD LCD displays are even worse. They are the bane of my existence. Sometimes I, I look at my watch. I like my watch, but I look at it. I can't read this one, and I become enraged. Like, why do they make these negative LCD displays when on the G-Shock watches? When Casio makes these other watches, like cheapo Casio watches, or, you know, like this is a ProTrek, a Casio ProTrek, and has a big legible display. This is an STN LCD display, a positive one, and it is highly legible. This is a Casio G-Shock, barely able to read it. And so everybody's asking, why don't we put a... LCD like this on a G-Shock. Well, Casio really smashed the pot with this one, bringing out the MIP. And so that is the most attractive part of this watch. You know, besides the fact it fits, a watch has to fit, right? So it fits me as a big wrister, and then I have an, a, a, a legible display that you can read at very acute angles and in low light. Like, look, you lose the ability to read this this. Uh, G-Shock, the king, you can't really see it in the glare or at that angle, but this brand new GBD H2000 still pumping out the legibility, right? And let's talk about illumination while we're talking about the screen. Absolutely fantastic. You know, you hit the light button and, and, it's, and in the dark, you can see it beautifully and it can stay on for five seconds. And here is, a, is an amazing feature that everybody's been screaming at Casio to, uh, to employ. And that is when the light comes on, you can change the screen and the light will stay on. Yeah, believe it or not, if you turn the light on some other Casios, right? Say I turn the light on here, the light's on. All right, let me hit compass, the light goes off. Why? Everybody's asking, why, why, Casio, why do you do it that way? Well, Casio, whatever reason they did it that way, they obviously resolved that issue because now you hit the light and you can do whatever you want. You can change the functions and the light stays on. And I have it that the light comes on. I mean, it, it took it out of the box. And whenever you press a button, the light comes on. You can press the light button, the light will come on. But you can press any button and the light comes on <laughs> that's great that's amazing right and also i have on the auto illuminate like these other casio watches you you if you like if you have it on your wrist and you raise it up the light will come on i think it's called auto illuminate and it's not cooperating now but that's what happens and on this one same thing you know if you have it on you bring it up to your face it will auto illuminate. Of course, I can't get it to do it now, but that's what happens. And that's good, you know, in uh, low light, dark situations, you just look at your watch, boom, light comes on, okay? And so the screen's great. Now the durability, okay? The actual, you know, the watch itself, you know, like I said, it's light. It's surprisingly light for how much of a, of a lunker it is. And it's surprisingly well designed that it doesn't feel that big. But the durability, well, I gotta say that these screws feel very durable. And I hate it when watches have pins. You notice that I don't have any watches with pins. It's because that's the part that always fails on my watches. Like you walk through a door jam, you hit the side and boom, the pins pop out and you lost your watch. Well, these watches, they have screws and this, this feels good. I mean, it does have a little bit of play in it, as you can see, but, you know, sometimes it's good that components bend before they break. And these these screws that hold the watch band together feel good. Now, honestly, it doesn't feel as durable as this one because this is the king. This is a hockey puck. I could play hockey with this thing. I could lay down a clapper and go bar down into the net, and this thing would still be fine. That's how durable this is. And the band too, the band on this one's really thick, wide and durable, right? This one's pretty good, pretty thick, not as wide, but durable. This one, eh, I don't know, it's kind of, this may be the weak point is the durability, 
but they may have given up a little bit of the durability on the band based on the fact that this is a fitness watch and you know they want it to be a little bit elastic because you have to wear it tight they could see how i normally wore it on notch three that's how i opened up the video now i don't want on notch five and it's really tight you can see my uh you know my my plumpness you know these uh okay i'll just call it fat you could see it you know sticking out from the side of the band i have it on tight because you have this heart rate monitor you want it tight so the elastic in this band may be a maybe a it may not be a bug it may be a feature however allow me to interject something about i read that this is biomass plastic i think that's stupid i think that biomass plastic is really dumb and the reason you know I, i'll make another video about how biomass plastic is dumb but plastic comes from from petroleum it's a petroleum product I mean, you know it comes from natural gas actually i work in an oil field right if they're going to be pumping oil you know for energy and so as a byproduct of that of that natural gas that they pump for for energy you know just make plastic out of it right the idea that that casio's like oh we're good for the environment we have uh biomass plastic well now you're using food as a as a source of your plastic and that's gonna uh screw around with the commodity price of food you know that's not going to help poor people who need cheap food I think it's it's dumb and counterproductive, but that's just a side note. And uh, so five out of five stars for for the fit, the the durability for the screen, and for for how the watch feels. You know, I really like this watch. Yesterday I was wearing both of these, and while wearing, you know, this one on my right on my right wrist, this one on my left wrist. And I, and I just noticed how much more this watch got in the way of the sleeve. I felt it all the time I was wearing it. And this watch felt great, you know? Same dimensions, pretty much, even a little bit thicker at the thickest part, but it wore well, okay? And now let's talk about the functionality, okay? I do not like Bluetooth on a watch, okay? I, I just, I'm not, I don't like Bluetooth. All right, when I get a watch, like these two watches are uh, the multi-band six solar Casio watches, which I think are great. I live in Texas. It picks up the multi-band six terrifically. You know, I uh, never have a problem unless, you know, I'm in the sleeper berth of a, of a Peterbilt and the engine's running and it doesn't always pick up the multi-band six. But under normal conditions, the watch syncs up to the atomic clock, no problem. And the West Texas Sun gives plenty of energy for the solar components to, to uh, power these watches. And I, and I love that setup. Uh, this one they, they is, is part of Casio's trend towards Bluetooth, which I do not like, okay? But that's the way they're going. They want, instead of multi-band six, they want to have your, your watch sync up to your phone to... to uh, to synchronize the time, the clock. And I, I don't like that. I don't want that. Now, uh, so I've not turned on the Bluetooth. I've not connected this to my phone at all. And I really don't want to, I don't plan to. I wanna see how long I can go without hooking it up to my phone. And uh, some of you guys may understand that some of you may think that it's just preposterous and, and you have no problem with Bluetooth. That's fine. I mean, two big problems with Bluetooth for me you know, well, three actually are the privacy issues. Number two is the radiation. You have a radio on your wrist radiating uh, electromagnetic frequencies. I don't, you know, I want to limit my exposure to that. And I'm not a dummy about radio frequencies. I mean, I'm a licensed ham radio operator. I think I know a thing or two. Uh, and then the third thing is, uh, is uh, the tactical issues. You know, you can be pinpointed and spotted by, you know, by the 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 uh, radio emissions from your Bluetooth. So tactically speaking, having the Bluetooth on could give away your position, okay? So I'm gonna see how far I can go with this watch with the Bluetooth off, all right? And it has a heart rate monitor, okay? So uh, I'm trying to lose weight 
And back in the early 2000s, when I was a young man, I was actually uh, a rower. I was a walk-on rower in college. And the coach had us all go out and buy a heart rate monitor, and he had us train with a heart rate monitor. And, you know, just a basic heart rate monitor. So you turn it on, right? And uh, that's how we trained. We did steady state workouts, and we pushed our, our max heart rate on on the ergs you know the rowing machines and so i feel like i don't need all the smart watch uh synchronization with the heart rates you know I, I think just basic heart rate monitor would be would be good for my training to help me get back into shape right and and also having a gps on it uh you know it can sync the time by the gps Okay. And, uh, and so that, that's, that's good. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, a fraction of a second off from the atomic clock sync watches, right? So the GPS time, but the problem is I have not found out how to automatically do that. This will automatically try and sync to the atomic clock at midnight. This one too. This one, I'm not sure that it does that. And so I'm still trying to figure out how it does that. Okay, so the first big problem for me is I have not found out how to get it to display the GPS coordinates. Because that's part of the reason why I wanted to buy this watch would be that if I, that is, is because it has a GPS uh, receiver in there, I would want to know what are my coordinates. And I have not figured out how it provides that, Okay. You know, it has a GPS on there so that when you go to your workouts and there's a few different workouts that it, it will, uh, it will acquire the GPS satellite. Okay. So let's just use running. So it's starting up the GPS and it does that in order to calculate how far you've run. Okay, so that's what the GPS is primarily used for. And I was hoping that it would be used for time synchronization and also generating the coordinates. So you can reference your coordinates to another map or other GPS uh, or other, you know, uh, navigational software. Okay. Uh, but anyways, that's another project I'm working on. So those are some of the shortcomings that, that I'm finding in the, in the GPS in, or in the software of this. And, uh, but, and I haven't, I haven't used it to work out yet to see how well it does as a fitness watch. Cause I've only had it for a few days. Actually, it's funny. Uh, when this watch, this watch arrived while I was hiking in Palo Duro Canyon, right? So at the time I was using this watch and, uh, and it would have been nice to, to try out this one because, you know, a lot of people are probably asking what, you know, if I don't like Bluetooth, why, why do I have this? Because this relies so heavily on, on the app. And part of the reason is right here. Okay. You look, look at that monster. See, those are its eyes. That's its nostrils. That's its teeth, right? It's, it's looks like it's ready, uh, to eat you pretty much well that's a, that's actually the sensor see it's labeled this is the altimeter barometer and compass okay so from the main screen this is the main time screen you go to the different apps i don't know if they call them apps but the different functions of the watch and you can scroll down and this is another problem it goes kind of slow you can go to compass and altimeter, all right? So enter, this is the altimeter. 3,275 feet here in Dumas, Texas. Shows you the time and the heart rate. So that's good to know. That would be great while hiking. So you can see how much elevation gain you're getting, okay? And you can also, if you press this button while in altimeter, boom you get a graph so you can see your elevation gain and so comparing the the abc functions of the gbdh 2000 to your your casio pro trek a digital one uh 
The advantage to this one is that you can access compass, barometer, or altimeter from any screen just by pressing their own dedicated buttons, okay? And this one, you need to dive through the menu to get to here. And this one has a graph of the altitude and hasn't changed much because I've been in here in this room uh, all day. And this one, the same thing. All right. And, uh, you know, you can see some of my other videos where, where when hiking, uh, how this measures the, the altitude on this graph. So I think that some people may be wondering, why would you spend $400 on a watch that you're not even planning on using the Bluetooth or any of the smartwatch functionalities. Well, the reason is because this is like, this watch is like a secret rangeman watch or a ProTrek watch. It has the ABS sensors. It has a GPS functionality. It's solar and it's a durable G-Shock watch that most importantly, it fits, right? So all that together, it's not that much more. This is $400 retail, right? Whereas, you know, your, your, your standard rangeman, the GW9400 is 330 retail, and you can get it for 230 on Amazon. But, you know, if the price of this watch comes down, I mean, it, it's kind of a no brainer to buy, right? And, uh, so I just want, I, I guess I'll just uh, comment a little bit more about, about the fitness functionalities because I feel like a lot of people watching this may be more interested in it than me. So when you're on the time screen, when you hit enter, these are the several uh, workouts that it allows. So running, biking, gym workout, interval timer, pool swimming, open water swimming, trail running and walking and i have not tested these out okay but there aren't that many uh, i'm pretty sure that the garmin watches have more you know i do a lot of hiking i would like to see uh some functionality that that helps you in hiking in terms of how far you've you, you've walked in your heart rate i don't know if trail running or walking would be better for for hiking but when you select your workout and I'm going to assume that a lot of people interested in this watch are running. So we'll go to running. You hit enter and it tries to acquire the satellites. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a hotel room now. So I'm hoping that the structure of the building won't interfere with its ability to acquire the GPS satellites. But it, it, will, it will give you a workout based on, on your heart rate and your... Uh, distance running and it will it, and there's a few different way that you can view the information and so anyways I'll just tell you another problem with the watch while we're waiting for it to receive the GPS is that if you're in some situation where if, for whatever reason it can't get the GPS it would be nice to be able to do your workout without it you know obviously you won't be able to get your distance run, but you should still be able to see your heart rate and maybe use a step counter because I'm pretty sure this has a step counter on it and, you know, how long you've been working out. That would be nice, but it's not coming on. So there you go. That's that's one problem with the software is that I think that you should be able to work out if even if you can't get the GPS to uh, hook up. So at any point when you press back, you'll go back to the time screen. Anyways, guys, Okay, that's that's kind of my my first review of this watch. If you want more information, you know, ask me in the comments. I can make another video covering anything you want on this if you're interested in buying it. And and like I said, five stars out of five stars for the body of the watch, the fit, the in three out of five for you know the, the, some of the uh, the software. Let's just say. All right, well, I'm I'm Jim Kincaid. Thanks for watching.